nestled in a broad, fertile plain of western China, is the ancient village of Guanxin. It is early morning, but already the day's activities are getting underway. A farmer from an outlying district drives his noisy flock of ducks to the Guanxin village market. Porters with squeaky wheelbarrows make their way along roads nearby to market with grain, to market with pigs, pigs that swing from shoulder poles. Produce and people, barrows and rickshaws move along roads that lead to the village. For centuries, ornamental gates which mark the entrances to Guanxin have witnessed the round of village life. This morning, as on countless other mornings, porters trudge along with their creaking shoulder poles, bearing the goods of commerce, bearing well-to-do passengers in swaying sedan chairs, men with burdens on their backs, others leading herds of goats pass along the narrow streets. After the quiet of the night, the village comes to life. Shops boarded up while the village slept are now opened wide for trade again as customers come along. Once more, goods are displayed as buyer and seller bargain. Shops that deal in household goods and shops that offer vegetables begin once more to serve the needs of customers from the village. Through the day, the handheld scale will weigh out many a purchase. And in a nearby lumber yard, the saws will hum until darkness falls. Among those having early morning errands in the village is old grandfather Lee, long a well-known farmer of Guanxin. His farm on the village outskirts no longer needs his labors. The lands owned by the Lee family through the centuries are now farmed by grandfather Lee's sons. Already in a garden patch beside the family household, Lee Wing Kwong, the eldest son, is carefully tending the soil. And as part of the preparation for the morning meal, Mei Lan, a sister-in-law, draws water from a well. Like all water used for drinking, it will be boiled and perhaps made into tea. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, the wife of Li Wing Kwong busies herself over a large iron kettle. Using charcoal for fuel, she has prepared a large quantity of steaming rice. There are many mouths to feed in the Li household. Her son, Li Shu Ming, will want a good meal before he leaves for school. Just now, he is finishing the long and careful brushing of his teeth that starts off every day. The washing of his hands follows next as he stands before a basin of water from the well. His sister and a cousin Having already finished dressing, play with baby brother. Tending little Ollie Young is one of sister's regular tasks, though she is often gladly assisted by grandmother Lee, who sits close by proudly knitting a little jacket for her grandson. But now, as sister-in-law Mei Lan brings in some dishes she has prepared for the morning meal, the group assembled for breakfast are ready to begin. Now the chopsticks go into action. Everyone helps himself from the dishes of vegetables placed in the center. Sister and brother, mother and father, aunt and uncle all hold rice bowls in the left hand and chopsticks in the right. As they eat, there are frequent pauses for sips of tea from cups that are filled and filled again. With breakfast over, Farmer Lee leads his water buffalo from the stall for the day's work in the rice fields. His brother and a helper take up their farming tools and the three men together with their faithful buffalo proceed to the family lands. On their way, they pass a small shrine housing local gods of the fields.
Meanwhile, Xu Ming and his sister, Mei Ling, have started off to school. On the way, they call for a friend. Are you ready, King Chan? In a minute, Xu Ming. And now, joined by their friend, King Chan, the children proceed to school. They make their way through the traffic of the village streets, swinging along with their school books. Entering the school grounds, other boys and girls of the village are also arriving for class. They are proud of their school, the children of the village. Proud, too, of their Boy Scout and Girl Scout uniforms. To these organizations, almost all the children belong, though not everyone wears his Scout uniform to school. When all have entered the classroom and have taken their places, lessons proceed. Reading is first on the schedule for today. Mei Ling takes out her reader, which contains stories teaching the importance of loyalty to parents. From these stories, King Chan is first to read. While he reads, his father, a wealthy silk merchant of the village, calculates his accounts with an abacus. While this girl reads, her father, an honored miller of the village, grinds grain with ancient stones. While this lad reads, his father, a musical instrument maker, is busy with his work. The wooden parts for lutes, violins, and flutes, he shapes by hand with greatest care. But the fathers of most of the children are farmers, like the father of Xu Ming and Mei Ling. Here he plows his fields while his brother works nearby, breaking up the clods of earth with a hoe and making ready for planting. As the day wears on, Mother Li makes her way to the field, bringing a pot of tea to her husband. For Father Li, as with other farmers, the work day is long, and a refreshing drink of the hot, thirst-quenching liquid most welcome. In the afternoon, Grandfather employs a scribe to write a letter to a friend. Grandfather Lee never learned to write. But his grandson is more fortunate. Writing is one of the first things Xu Ming is taught in school. Here for the children to copy, the teacher writes Chung Guo. Chung Guo meaning Middle Kingdom, the Chinese name for China. Xu Ming is more fortunate than grandfather too in sharing in the play program of the modern school. Likewise, the girls learn bodybuilding games their mothers never played, games Mei Ling enjoys. In the late afternoon, both schoolyard games and classroom lessons are over for the day. Boys and girls file out of the gate, some to work, some to play. With school over, King Chan thinks it would be nice to play checkers, but Xu Ming wants to go swimming. There's an easy way to decide, the game of stone, scissors, and paper. Yi, uh, san. King Chan wins, and checkers it will be. In one of the dimly lighted rooms off the courtyard of the Wong home, the friends take up their game. Perhaps in this game, Xu Ming will win. And now toward evening, Grandfather makes his leisurely way through the village, back to the Lee home. It has been a pleasant day, with many a friendly chat. Now too, Farmer Lee leads his buffalo back to the stall after a long day's work in the fields. Before little Ali Young is put to bed, there must be fond good nights to Grandfather and Grandmother. Now in the evening, Farmer Lee, who does the buying for the family, makes a purchase of salt. Mother is once again at her stove, preparing the evening meal for her family. 
To the children, seated in the darkening courtyard, come the strains of a neighbor's violin. The wistful melody floats out over the ancient village toward the mountains that loom beyond.